Let's face it, the job market for software developers isn't that great at the moment. Not only have companies stopped hiring, but the market is flooded with talented software developers. If you want to get a job in 2023, then you need to make sure that you're at least learning a language that is in demand. So in this video, I'm gonna be covering the top five programming languages that you need to know to get a job this year. And number five, we have Solidity. The buzz around Web3 might have died down a little bit, but the fact remains there's still a high demand for Solidity developers. Compared to the other languages that we're going to look at today, Solidity is fairly new. It was created in 2014 by Gavin Wood, who is the CTO of Ethereum. It is based on C++ and JavaScript, and it was created for writing smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain. Being a fairly new language, not many developers know it. And based on the rules of supply and demand, it means you can command a higher salary if you know Solidity. If you look on job sites such as Indeed, you'll find salaries in the range of 150 to 300,000 a year. If you're interested in Web3, then it's definitely worth learning Solidity. Solidity. The major downside of Solidity is it's not really used outside of Web3. It also has quite a steep learning curve which can be quite difficult if you don't already know a language such as C++. And number four we have Java. Unlike Solidity, Java is a lot older and has been around since 1995. Thanks to the Java Virtual Machine, Java can run pretty much anywhere and it's the main language used for Android development. But it isn't just limited to mobile devices, it can also be used for writing web applications, APIs and even desktop apps. If you look for jobs in Java, you'll see large companies such as Amex, Mastercard, Boeing and Nike all looking for Java developers at the moment. It's also used at companies such as PayPal, LinkedIn and Uber and even used for some things at Microsoft which is surprising. Java isn't as hard to learn as Solidity, but it is an object-oriented programming language, which makes it a bit harder to learn than, say, Python. There are so many companies using Java that it's not too difficult to find a job. However, some of those companies that I've just mentioned were included in the mass layoffs in the last year, which means there's probably going to be an influx of Java developers looking for a job. With more developers on the market, it does mean a slightly lower salary, but companies are still offering between 85 and 150k, so it's not exactly small. At number three, we have C Sharp. Thanks to .NET Core, C Sharp can be run on more than just Windows. It can also be run on Mac and more importantly, Linux, which makes it perfect for running services in Docker containers. C Sharp is a relatively new language compared to Java as it was only created in 2000. However, with Microsoft backing it, it has quickly become one of the main languages used by companies. C Sharp is generally the language of choice in the corporate world. You will find it in banking, fintech, governments, and even startups. Companies tend to choose .NET as there's always a big pool of developers to pick from. And if you want to do some games development, for example, then C Sharp is a really good choice as it's also used by the Unity games engine. C Sharp, like Java, is also an object-oriented programming language, but it's a great choice if you want to build a stable career in software development. Salaries for C Sharp developers is similar to what you get for Java developers, but the fact that it's also used in fintech and banking means that salaries do tend to be a bit higher in those industries. At number two, we have Python. Thanks to its use in big data and machine learning, Python is being picked up by more and more companies. Netflix uses Python extensively for their recommendation engine, and it's also used for their CDN that's used to stream the videos. Unless you have been living under a rock, then you've probably heard of ChatGPT, which, yes, you've guessed it, is also written in Python. Python is a really simple language to learn, and thanks to all the frameworks and libraries available for it, you can pretty much build anything. Because Python is so easy to learn, the salaries do vary quite a bit for it. When Python is used in the real world, however, it's not as simple as a lot of the tutorials that you see on YouTube. If you can learn some in-demand skills such as machine learning that not a lot of developers know, then you can earn a lot as a Python developer. However, if your knowledge is limited to simple tutorials, then you're not going to earn that much. Having said that, there's a lot of companies looking to automate their workflows. And to do that, you don't need much more than simple Python. And therefore, there's plenty of opportunity for freelance developers who know Python. And number one, we have, of course, JavaScript. Without JavaScript, the internet wouldn't be what it is today. JavaScript is used on every single website in the world, and therefore nearly every company could benefit from a JavaScript developer. JavaScript is not only used for websites, it can also be used for back-end development thanks to Node.js, which makes it a really versatile language to learn that will serve you well in your career. If you also learn a framework such as React.js, then you're in a very good position for getting a job as a JavaScript developer. Salaries for front-end developers can range from anything from 70k to 200k a year, and it's a lot easier to learn than, say, machine learning, for example. If you look at the Stack Overflow developer survey from last year, you'll see that JavaScript is at the top of the most commonly used programming languages, and it has been there for the last 10 years. The only downside of learning JavaScript is how quickly new frameworks come out. You might be using React.js now, but chances are there's going to be a new framework that comes out in a few years' time, and therefore you need to constantly learn new frameworks to keep up to date. 
if you've liked this video, then please hit that like button. It really helps this video be found. Now, the main question you need to ask yourself is not which programming language I want to learn, but what do I want to do? If you're really interested in Web3, then Solidity is the best choice. If you want to learn web development, then go with JavaScript. And if you're still not sure, you might want to watch this video on whether you want to be a front-end developer or a back-end developer. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.